Okay, everyone, wipe your ass and get your dicks hard. I will be explaining Ohm's Law in Minecraft using these, these four, f five, sorry, five builds. Here, I'll be explaining it using water just so you can, you know, get a better visualization of what Ohm's Law is because it's hard to explain it with just words alone considering I probably don't have many. And we'll be looking at voltage, current, and resistance and how they they work in circuits N nothing else just those basic three and they're the three most most used measures of what of different things inside a circuit and i'll probably be getting some pictures up later just so i can explain the equations because again my vocabulary doesn't allow me to do much with just words alone so what is ohm's law ohm's law is pretty much the three basic equations all using voltage, resistance, and current. Voltage being measured in volts, resistance being measured in ohms, O-H-M-S, um, and current being resist uh, measured in amperes, or amps for short. So what, what we have here is three basic water slides, and I'll be giving you an, an example of what resistance looks like, what voltage looks like, and what current looks like in terms of just water flow, just to get a better idea of what it, what, it, what it is. And water is a replacement for electrons. And if you don't know what electrons are, just Google a basic diagram of an atom. They're the things around the outside of it. First off, we have water. And as I said, water equals electrons. And see how there's three blocks flowing? That's quite a bit of water flowing down down this, this line. And the wider it is, the more water is flowing. And, you know, alternatively, the more electrons are flowing. And the more electrons that flow, or more water, equals higher current. Current is just the amount that, that, that flows. The, the speed at which the water is going, or being pushed would be voltage. Voltage is the force of the electrons. And see this little kink in, in the slide, how it kind of reduces the, it reduces the amount of water flying or reduces the current. And it would also reduce the voltage, the, the speed of the water. This would be considered higher resistance than around here. See how it's only one block wide? Because when you increase resistance, voltage goes down and current goes down. But when we're talking about voltage, we're usually talking about voltage drop, how much each component of the circuit drops the voltage down. And as you can see, it does get wider, but it doesn't, after you put a resistor in the circuit, current doesn't go up afterwards unless there's another path that the electrons are taking. This, this wider thing, it, it, it's just to, to show you that a, a squeeze in a pipe is like a, a higher resistance area of the cable. And if you can imagine this slide as a cable, a copper cable, when copper has very little resistance, you can go over thousands of meters and there'll be barely any voltage drop. Um, so that's why we use copper cables. I have these two small slides to demonstrate that the bigger a cable is, the fatter it is, the bigger the cross-sectional area of a, if you take just a slice of cable, the, the bigger in diameter it is, the less resistance it'll have and the more current can flow. So, you know, wider slide equals more, more current, more water flowing down. A smaller, thinner slide or a thinner cable equals less water going down and more resistance. The next part I'll explain using redstone. So what my channel does, redstone things. So I'll explain it using redstone. As we all know, or at least most of you will know, redstone has a signal strength of 15. When you put a switch down, flick it on, or a torch or a button or a pressure plate, it'll go 15 blocks. And then on the 16th, there'll be no signal and each each block it'll lose a signal of one and i do have a video idea for you know calculating the voltage drop of 
a redstone line and I will be making that at some point. But but for now, all you need to know is the strength will go to about 15 blocks. So this will have a signal strength of one. This will be 15, this will be 14, this will be 13. And after 16, after the 16th block, if you don't put a repeater here to increase the signal strength back to 15, it'll stop and won't power anything. And all that being said, let's explain Ohm's law with redstone now. So this will have, this is, let's just say it's one big cable, not three lines of small cables. This will have a lot of current. All the electrons are being pushed, a three block wide thing being pushed and voltage will be reducing and that's called voltage drop. Um, and then when it hits a repeater, it'll renew it. But let's just say the signals signal strength is 15 all along. And this will be described as current. If we remove these, these, the current will go down because it's a thinner cable. But the signal strength is still the same. The, the, the force at which the electrons are being pushed. And let's reduce it again. That's less current again. But again, the signal strength hasn't changed. The, it's still being pushed at the same rate. But then we, when we go to here, this will be lower current but higher voltage because it'll be each each block each redstone repeater is at 15 full strength and so the the electrons are being pushed at 15 signal strengths each block so this this area will have a higher voltage and then this area here there's still power on each one but there's it's thinner and each signal is less strong than all those previous so this will have a higher resistance and i've 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 had a i've put a little thing here with uh, a comparator set to i think a th negative mode or whatever it's called i have an ultimate guide to comparators if you want to know what i've done here but this will act as a resistor and resistors are in every electronic circuit to control how much voltage and how much current is is going through a specific circuit and so these all have a signal strength of about one so low low signal strength low voltage low current and yeah so higher resistance in this part so now that you guys have a rough idea hopefully on what voltage resistance and current is before we get to the equations I just want to say voltage and current is indirectly proportional to resistance so higher resistance lower voltage and current the higher voltage generally the higher the current the higher the current generally the higher the voltage and the higher voltage and current the lower resistance is so once upon a time this very smart guy called george ohm discovered ohm's law or came up with it and this is the culmination of his realization that current, voltage, and resistance, all in a circuit, are relative to each other. And so, as you can see, there's a triangle, which actually makes it really easy to visualize the equations. V on top, I and R on the bottom, I equals current, R resistance, and V voltage. I don't know why I is current, uh, so, you know, ask George Ohm if he was still alive. And on the right, you can see the the three equations. So usually it's VIR, V equals I times R, or voltage equals current times resistance. But then when you want to find either current or resistance, this triangle comes in handy because voltage is always on top thanks to basic transposition. So when you want to find R, it's V over I, voltage divided by current. When you want to find I, current, it's V over R, voltage divided by resistance.